Okay, so let's add some functionality for our buttons. They'll be encased in an if block, just like all the other buttons we've done. Now the way this works is when you press the button, this if block will be called. And when it's called, what we want to do is check to see if we have enough points to spend. And if we do, uh, increase the stat that we're on by one point and decrease the amount of points we have left by one. So we're actually going to start off with the plus sign. I think logically it might be a little easier for people to understand. So we'll say if the button is clicked, we'll check our starting points to make sure they at least have points to spend. So if starting points Sorry, it's points left. If points left is greater than zero, then increase this stat. So that's going to be tune dot get primary attribute, pass in the index of the button that's being pressed. Now we'll want to adjust the base value. So base value, and we just want to increase it by one. Then we want to make sure that we also subtract one from the points left. So let's go test that out. We'll hit play. Might. So we start increasing the might. And we notice as the might goes up, points left goes down. And it should work for all of our attributes. Now let's go ahead and do the negative. Now the negative button works pretty much the same. It's the same structure but we're just going to be checking different things. So I'm just going to cut and paste it in. But instead of checking to see if the points are greater than zero, we want to check to make sure that our attribute is at least at the minimum starting value. So we don't want them to be able to go below 10. So we'll clear this out and we'll just call to check to see what the value is at. So if tune dot get primary attribute pass the index dot base value is greater than the min starting attribute value then we're going to take that base value subtract one and add one to our points left. Now let's take a look to see if that's working. So we have no errors. We'll start this up. Now if we start hitting negative, it's working right away and it's actually increasing. So let's take a look at that algorithm one more time. Ah. I went ahead and moved it the wrong way. So we'll just simply move this. This one was supposed to be here. And this one here. So just a quick look to make sure that's right. If tune, okay, we're checking the value. Yes, that's on the negative. Okay, save it, and we'll try it again. So as we hit the negative, nothing happens. But if we start increasing it, we notice that the value is going up and the value is going down there, then we can decrease it again. So we have that working now. Uh, the next thing we want to do is hook up the ability to change uh, the vitals and the skills that our character has uh, based on what our attributes are going to be. Now, I forgot to do something when we were creating our base character. We had made these functions down here to set up the skill modifiers and set up your vitals modifiers, but at no point in our script do we actually ever call these. But those are pretty simple to add. You just go up to where it says set up vitals. I'm going to get rid of these little curly braces. I tend to, if I don't need them, I tend to not want them just for vertical spacing and you just simply call the function that we need for it. So 
For our vitals, we're going to want to set up your vital modifiers. And for our skills, we'll want to set up our skills modifiers. There we go. Now in our character generator, we're just going to go to the update function and call the stat update for there on our tune. So tune dot stat update. And if we take a look, we now have values. And as we adjust our values, according to what modifiers we have set for our skills and vitals, you'll notice that these are now changing as well. Okay. Well, we only need those skills, well, we only need the update to be called every time uh, an attribute changes. And by putting it in the update function, that's calling it every frame. It's a little bit of a waste. We don't really need it there. So we're just going to move it to when we click a button. So we'll move it down here. And we're also going to add it right here. Uh, up one more. It's just a little bit of a, an efficiency optimization. We don't need it called every frame if they're not pressing the button. Now we'll just save it. Quickly check, make sure it's still working. Okay, it looks like we're going to want to call it once just to get it uh, to initialize the first time. So we'll go up to where we're setting everything up. We'll do it right after here. Well, that's in the for loop, so we want it right after the for loop. And there we go. Now it's going to take them a while to assign 350 points. Uh, there's a couple ways we can get around this. We could have a template set up so they could have a drop down over here where they'd select, you know, give me the warrior template and it would give them some sort of base configuration that they could go off of. I'm not going to bother doing that because I really don't want to have classes. I want everyone in the game to be just as potentially efficient as any other player in the game. So basically I don't want to have classes. So I'm just going to increase their base value, well at least what they start with. I'll put them all to, I don't know, 50 and see how that works, but I'm still going to keep the minimum of 10. So let's go implement that now. So we'll open up Mono Development. And I'm going to create a new constant. It will be in an integer. And I'm going to call it uh, starting value. All capitals. And we will start off with 50. Someone asked me why I have capitals for my constants and it's just a way to easily like later on down here when I'm working on stuff when I see it all capitalized I'm like oh that's a constant so I know not to even attempt to try to change it so let's go down to where we assign the base value uh, display attributes we should just be able to go up to the start and see where it goes of course we really should start commenting all of this now that scripts are starting to get longer and longer and a little bit more complex so we have it right here uh, we're taking all of our base attributes and we're assigning them the minimum starting value. Now we're just going to assign it the starting value. But we don't want to have them have the starting new starting value of 50 plus uh, 350 to spend. So we're actually going to go in here and subtract the value from our minimum or from our points left, sorry. So we'll just say points left. And we'll say negative equals, which is basically just saying whatever we have in our points left, take this amount away from it. And I'm going to put it in parentheses, and I'm going to say uh, we're going to go with our starting value. minus our minimum 
starting a tribute value. You could have just as easily written, you know, 50 minus 10 or even just 40. But if you do want to change these values a little later on, uh, you won't have to change anything down here. So let's save that off and go take a look, see if it works. And there we go. We have 70 points left to spend. And plus they can still go down if they wish to 10 if they want. With the sliders, it was easier to adjust. But I'm thinking of putting this out on the iPhone. And while sliders work on the iPhone, they do take up a lot of room. I could always just make a tabbed index and have the skills on the second page. But I want to find a way to be able to put everything on the same page. Uh, I could easily, I guess, just make these uh, one slider on the screen. And you could click might has a button and one slider will pop up and you adjust that then you can click constitution another slider uh, the actual layout and design is something that I'm gonna to have to work on but this is basically how it works everything's going to be the same the only difference will be how it's displayed and I probably won't use on GUI I tend to use something like a sprite manager maybe sprite manager 2 uh, that'll probably be like an extra video near the end it actually cost money. I can't remember how much. I don't think it was that much. But I want to keep everything that I do in this tutorial free so it's available to everyone. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to fix. Uh, right here I used a text area. And it should have actually been a text field. So let's go do that right now. Now the only difference between a text area and a text field is a text area allows you to enter multiple lines of text where a text field is just a single line. And all we need is a single line for the name. So let's go ahead and change it. So it's right here where we had text area. Just change it to a field. It takes all the same parameters. It returns the same thing. And if we start it up, there we go. It looks the same. In our next tutorial, we'll go ahead and work a little bit on how to change the appearance of this through graphics. As some people might find that a little bit interesting, uh, I tend to use a sprite manager to make all my GUI layouts, something like Sprite Manager 2. Uh, but those generally cost a little bit of money and I wanted to keep everything in this free so it's available to everyone to use. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.